All right, we're at the ledge today. Uh, looks like I'm the first one here, which is good. Um, the swell right now is 0.7 meters um, at five second intervals. And it is low tide uh, right now, about to be peak, and then it'll be in at high tide soon. So it'll be high tide maybe in seven hours. So we have a lot of time to fish, but I don't have a lot of time to fish. I've only got maybe four hours to fish um, before I have to go. <clears throat> but we'll see what we can do and we'll make the most of our time here and see if we can catch uh, a legal kingy or a decent sized bonito uh, we can take home for dinner. See how it goes. Switch to uh, to the palms G because it is a little bit swelly at the moment. I just want to stand further back away from the waves um, just for safety. So let's see how we go. So as I'm fishing here, I didn't realize that um, on the day of the swell predictions actually change. So that's why it's pretty important to check it before you go off fishing and on the day off, just before you get in the car. Here, even though it was low tide, the waves were quite high and they were kind of splashing towards my feet. And I was actually standing quite further back to uh, just for safety. And so I couldn't use any stick baits. Otherwise they'd just snag and I, I can't see the stick baits working. So in this situation, I use a Ed Palms slow black jig just so that I can cast that out far without being too close to the edge. And also I did choose a glow color so I can charge it with my, my light and then cast it out. The pelagic fish that I'm after, like kingfish, bonito, mac tuna, they're all visual hunters. So they need to be able to see their prey in order to chase their prey down and eat them. And because it's so dark right now, um, they're not going to be able to see my lure. So what you can do is use a glow jig like I am using now and charge it up with my light. That will enable the, the glow jig to glow in the dark and allow the fish to be able to actually see the bait in the water of your lure and chase it down and bite. Come on. I'm just gonna let them run and tie up. Feels very weird, doesn't feel like a kingfish. Feels like a bonito. Trying to wash him up. Oh, it's a Benito. Oh, decent sized one. Woo! There we go.
good sized bonito for the morning before light so what I did was I was just using a glow jig uh, to get him because it is quite dark a glow jig definitely helps that's how big it is that's a five six five thousand size certate and he's a uh, quite big all right let's dispatch him so at this point i was actually uh ready to go home i already caught my fish that i wanted and i was actually starting to pack up until uh, one of the regular guys at that ledge uh, came down um, shout out to Yanni um, we ran into each other and uh, I decided to just stay to keep him company as well for safety um, and also um, to see if there was anything else around uh, and I had another friend that was supposed to come with me earlier on but uh, he slept in so that's why I was on the rocks early in the morning by myself. Normally I always go fishing, rock fishing specifically with another person for safety. But uh, today uh, I ended up going by myself. But luckily Yanni came down and um, we, we started fishing together from this point on. All right, we're gonna try the new stick bait now. Hopefully we can get onto a king or something. So at this point, the sun has risen a bit more and there's a lot more light. Uh, and also my friend finally showed up and came down as well. So there was three of us on the ledge here. Uh, and I started to feel a little bit brave enough to get closer to the ledge and actually try to work my stick bait, to, uh, top water stick baits. Um, and you can see here the waves and the swell, they haven't improved that much at all. If anything, they kind of got worse, to be honest. Um, but uh, they actually looked like it was improving at one point, but uh, because I, didn't, I couldn't see anything uh, early on uh, in the night, I couldn't see the difference uh, between the swell As you can see there, that was actually a warning wave. Um, normally when you get a big set, the yeah, couple of waves are, are like medium and then you'll get one big one. But uh, I, I wasn't paying attention to the intervals of the waves here and you actually should always pay attention to when, it, when there's a big wave coming because most likely it'll come again. GoPros, all right? Yeah, yeah I should have um I should have just stood still because I was like trying to run back. Yeah, that's when you lose your balance. Yeah. But here when the waves come here high, they smack up here, so careful there. Yeah. So your next video is gonna be a safety video. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> So 
so I got pretty lucky here. I walked away with just a few scrapes and, and bruises on my knees and elbow. And also, I kind of injured my shoulder a bit, break falling there when the waves swept me from underneath me. Uh, so, yeah, but at least I didn't get swept into the, the water. So that's a good thing. I do have my life jacket on and as well as cleats. I always wear the safety gear required when rock fishing. But so if you're in a situation where you're swept into the water, you should always try to swim out so that you're, the waves aren't smashing you against the rocks and knocking you out unconscious and rendering you unable to swim and breathe. So you should always swim out out there and then try to wave down and have your friend call a boat or the emergency department to to come and send out a boat a rescue boat and rescue you uh, while you're floating in the water safely out out offshore so i did keep fishing uh, here but unfortunately i didn't catch anything after this but my my friends on the ledge did manage to land multiple bonitos and one rat king. But I, after this, I pretty much was done. I was, I was getting ready to pack up and I pretty much caught it for the day and we headed home. So learning from the lessons I learned in the last session, I made sure to check the weather and the swell correctly on the day and I also made sure that uh, I was going a bit later in the day so that I can actually see the waves coming. I started this session out with a Maria Rapido uh, top water lure. I didn't get any any bites but I did have a few chases on top water and so they were probably just Benito chasing my lure. My lure is a bit too big and it's more designed to target bigger fish and bigger kingfish. Need help landing it? That's a good one. Oh, huge. Nice. So I decided to change to a Palms Gig Gigantic sinking pencil stick baked. Uh, I decided to do this because the kings weren't around. So it's always good to change to a different lure to see if uh, you can entice a bite or to target other species like Bonito. So the way I like to work this lure is using downwards short jerks of the rod tips followed by pauses every now and then and you'll see how effective this is right now. Oh, oh. oh it's a small Bonito. On the surface. Tiny. <laughs> there you go. More bonito on top water. Alright, let's give him a release. Maria breeding. It's a little bit of like a prawn imitation. Let's give this one a go. I have to use it when kind of slow fishing and then I'm not getting a lot of action because I can potentially catch uh, a snapper with this I've done it before so Let's see how we go here I'm opening up the bow arm and I'm just controlling the amount of line that's being let out by the spool with my palm and fingers and I'm just also counting in my head how long it takes for the line to go slack 
because once it goes slack, that's when you know that the, the jig has hit the bottom and you're ready to start jigging back up again. Bonita. I'm probably going to use this one as bait now. 